Simple recorded words can express immortal thoughts, dreams, aspirations, goals, culture, and philosophy. Ideas are expressed around which people frame their entire lives. They build their understanding of the world around these ideas. For centuries, cultures have recorded their ideas and thoughts about these fundamental questions of humanity. However, today we are more aware than ever of the possibility of losing these recordings of the history of humans. When they are lost, we lose the opportunity for our own and future generations to study and learn from them more about our own history and development. I think that there is something fundamental uh, that drives us toward the discovery that awaits inside something like those two Herculaneum rolls. In fact, I think this is what uh, has driven people through the last 300 years to um, you know, make the kinds of efforts they've made to physically unroll the Herculaneum uh, papyri. On the afternoon of August 24th, 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted. A dark column of volcanic debris that had risen into the stratosphere began hurling back down onto Vesuvius. A pyroclastic flow formed that sent a mixture of gas, ash, and rock racing down at 100 miles per hour toward Herculaneum. This flow, and several more following it, slowly filled the city's buildings from the bottom up. In the end, Herculaneum was covered in 20 meters of pyroclastic flow. As it cooled, it became rock hard, sealing the structures, bodies, and art of the city into an airtight tomb that would remain untouched for 1,700 years. Today, we are in a race to use 21st century technology to preserve the traces of ancient cultures before the relics disappear forever. Computer scientists, conservationists, and scholars are teaming up to preserve literary treasures from the dawn of civilizations. So we race against time because the degradation will eventually take these objects away. You see the state of the Herculaneum rolls as carefully and tediously as they have been conserved. Every time we touch them, every time they're moved, they degrade a little bit more. They are unbelievably fragile, unbelievably so. Um, and they are almost crumbling as you look at them, and that is very uh, heartbreaking. <laughs> and technology gives us a handle on grabbing them and holding on to them, even when the physical form slips away. Oui, la numérisation prend de plus en plus d'importance dans les bibliothèques, les archives et les musées, parce qu'elle permet, comme chacun sait, de consulter les documents à distance. Euh, elle permet également de protéger les originaux qui sont moins euh, détériorés par les manipulations et elle permet de conserver euh, toutes ces images mieux qu'on ne le faisait avec les photographies sur papier ou les hectachromes ou les diapositives. They were um, belonging to a private individual, probably a private collector, and they were stored in his personal library. The library of the Villa dei Papyri has thus far primarily contained the writings of a man named Philodemus, a philosopher and poet. Uh, Philodemus was a philosopher, an Epicurean philosopher, and what is especially interesting in this library is that we have the complete library of a philosopher, which is a, a, um, a unique case. And of course we have many texts, we know a lot of titles, we have a lot of fragments, but we have no complete book. So maybe with these new experiments, with these non-invasive experiments, we can hope to have, finally, a complete book of Philodemus. In 1709, well diggers found carved marble statues under the hard volcanic rock. Unknowingly, they had dug into the ancient theater of Herculaneum. In the middle of the 18th century, they were rediscovered during excavation of the site. As they came uh, to our institution as a sort of uh, uh, placating gift uh, 
from the King of Naples to the uh, invading Bonaparte, um, and then they came to France. Yes, it's really a miracle that we could find this, uh, this papyri from Herculaneum or from Egypt after 2,000, 3,000 years, because we, we always think that all these things are completely lost. Well, the scrolls were uh, both destroyed and preserved at the same time, covered by the ashes and, uh, and submitted to this extraordinary uh, heat. At the same time, they were also uh, protected from, from air, they were protected from uh, insects, they were protected from uh, degradation, humidity, uh, for centuries, 18 centuries. The hands of time that had been locked down on Herculaneum for centuries began ticking on scroll. The scrolls that for centuries were undisturbed now became the victims of multiple attempts to unlock their information. Conservators need to carefully care for materials in a collection, but at the same time, scholars uh, must continue understanding our past and understanding how collections should be managed and what we can learn from them. We must, we must keep the objects and we must make sure that they are kept and that they are in good condition and that they can be transmitted to the next generation. But also, we are here, what, is, what would be the good of keeping, uh, keeping artifacts, objects, books, manuscripts uh, for the next generation if the current generation can't have access to it? And, what if, we are, what if they are not used? So with technology to be able to solve the conflict that often occurs between those two things I think is really fascinating and is of interest broadly. Immediately after the scrolls were given to the Institute, some experiments of, uh, of unrolling, literal unrolling, and uh, that ended up in disaster. And then after those attempts in the middle or in late 18th century, it, uh, 19th century, it was decided that they were best left alone until, until some better technology would arrive. Recently, a team of international experts gathered in Paris to attempt a new scanning technique that may allow us to gain access into the words and thoughts of ancient civilizations that have been inaccessible for almost 17 centuries. One of the frontiers we're trying to break is to be able to put a camera in a place where you have an impenetrable object, something that can't be opened and can't be moved. And to be able to do that, we rely on X-ray or other kinds of penetrating uh, technologies that allow a photograph, essentially, to be made of the internals of something. Skyscan is specialized in the development and manufacturing of uh, micro CT systems. We have all the R&D in-house, we have scientists working on the technology itself. We also have mechanical and electrical engineering uh, for making or developing the systems, drawing the systems. Uh, and then all the assembly is done here as well. So all scanners are, are built here in Contech. Skyscan's scanner, the 1173, is the heart and soul of what we're doing this month in Paris and our relationship with Skyscan is crucial to be able to do the data acquisition and analysis that we'd like to do. This is the Skyscan 1173 machine. It has an X-ray uh, source of uh, 130 keV, so it can produce uh, X-rays up to 130 keV. You have the sample, uh, in this case uh, one of the Herculaneum scrolls. And this, uh, this sample is rotated over uh, very small angles, 0 0.2 degrees, uh, to, uh, have, uh, to make all these projection images to afterwards reconstruct uh, what is inside the scroll. It's a micro CT scanner, so it's uh, a lot higher resolution than kind of a medical grade CT scanner. And a lot of that is just uh, the geometry of how close they can get uh, the object to the X-ray source and the, the physics of the X-ray source and the sensor. Okay, the structure you can see at, uh, at micro CT resolution compared to medical CT resolution is about 100 times better because you're looking at microns instead of uh, millimeters of the structure. So the technological 
breakthrough, if you will, that we're bringing to this project is the ability to see in and through and around something without having to open it and present it so nicely to a camera system. So delivery was a little bit tricky because uh, getting a, a large heavy machine into the institute uh, is just problematic because uh, it's a large heavy machine. So uh, Skyscan helped with that. Uh, they were great with delivery. They had everything packaged up in a nice crate. They had somebody to assist with delivery and setup. It's Thursday of the first week and Skyscan and their engineers were here to give us training and, and during that time there was a problem with the scanner. The stage that does the rotation uh, was blocked somehow and, and wouldn't rotate. It'd make a grinding noise and sometimes vibrate when it would lock up, which is not a good thing for uh, fragile specimens and it made me nervous to put precious scrolls inside to do scans when we weren't certain that the rotational stage was going to operate correctly. So we could hear the noise but we weren't sure why it wasn't turning. And of course, if you, if you can't turn the sample, it's really not possible to do the scanning. Uh, so Dr. Seals, uh, with the assistance of Skyscan over the phone, uh, took apart the uh, plates and uh, discovered a, a piece inside and uh, found a loose wire that had uh, probably caught on something. And so what I needed to do then is uh, secure that wire in a place so that it would freely be able to rotate and then put everything back together and uh, by moving that out of the way and uh, reassembling it, we've uh, tried uh, rotating the stage again and it seems to be rotating fine right now, so we're going to uh, fire up the x-ray again, do an alignment test and uh, do some tests to make sure it's uh, running smoothly now. This has been a bit of a nerve-wracking situation because uh, these scanners are very reliable, so I think it's an extremely unusual situation to have a problem. And um, I feel like I am now an honorable field engineer for Skyscan because they weren't able to come over uh, quickly enough to get it running. Um, and so their instructions on the phone were perfect. I was able to look at the assembly, send them some photos over the internet. And I think all that taken together, uh, we've got the repair and we're going to move forward. The digital scanning offers the opportunity for the papyri of Herculaneum to once again be frozen in time, allowing access for future generations to study not only the scrolls themselves, but also the meaning behind the words written on them. The advent of new technologies have allowed us to discover things and also to have more people working on, uh, on the manuscripts, to have a larger community, uh, to be able to uh, find clues about um, the, uh, making, their creation, their preservation, their history. And then we scan them, we digitize them, we store them and we make them available. Uh, and in a way by doing that, we, we grab onto something uh, that can become in a way immortal. While the team in Paris works to digitally unroll the scrolls, it is unknown what may be found inside. There is always the possibility that a lost text of one of the great philosophers may be found. Regardless of the outcome of this procedure, ultimately, the scrolls will have been saved for another generation. It may just take one more step for technology to redeem the content inside and preserve it for all future generations. Even if we can't see the ink right away, it's a huge leap forward to be able to non-destructively see the internal structure of these two special roles. Uh, it's never been done before, and the resolution that we're getting is amazing. It truly is amazing. So we're going to have a huge understanding of the structure internally, and we're going to get that without having to really have any damage occur to, to those two roles. <laughs>